Right. Hey, welcome to my week after the show. Um, I, you know, I, you've been living under a rock if you weren't impacted yesterday by that shooting uh, in Virginia of the two television uh, journalists, that young reporter and her photographer just standing there being shot on live television. Um, I, but I think what really struck me about the whole thing was the fact that it was all playing out either live on television and then on social media. The fact that this guy put a GoPro on his head, filmed himself sh doing, the, doing the murders, and then put it online. And on Twitter, and then just took to Twitter, um, wrote a 23-page manifesto and sent it to, faxed it to ABC News. Um, you know, the whole thing is disturbing. And so you sit there, and I'm watching this coverage. And I don't know if you guys, do you ever get sucked into just s watching the same thing, and you're not even really hearing anything new after a while? You're just kind I, of watching it. you watch it cable TV news, you got to get used to that. do that all the time. I know, I, I know. But in a, in a, on a breaking story I like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch it. Why yesterday. didn't you watch it? Uh, I, you know, I, so to, for me, this is this is, and, and I don't think this is about guns. I think this is this is about uh, violence in the era of, of you know, individually controlled media. Uh, and I think this is this is something we have to look forward to, in, you know, in a in a very dark way, uh, in this country. This is a violent this is a violent country. There are a lot of really disturbed people uh, who think violence is the way to solve whatever problem they have and now they cannot just do it very easily of course because we do make it pretty easy to get a gun and, and do uh, what you want but now you can do it on television uh, uh, you can do it on your own television and that becomes broadcast to everybody I think the, the the lure of that for people who are who are sick this way who are who are disturbed is is tremendous and we're gonna see this more and more as we become sort of more and more connected this way it's pathological narcissism I think and and that's narcissism is what fuels these social networks everybody suddenly um, wants the quickest avenue to be famous to be a celebrity and this is demonstrated at the extreme and I agree with with Steve it's it's a offshoot of our increasingly violent society and I do think you know we're going to have to as a society to address our glorification of violence and the oh, violent how images do you start, how do you start that to we, do that well, though I, you make a national commitment because I mean if you look at what children are being raised with today it is just constant violent images yeah. and you go and it's on, impossible to keep them away from it, it is, that's because the thing. if you go on the internet and you go on YouTube um, these these sort of violent episodes whether they're whether they're play acted or real play out I mean we put you can go on YouTube and find school high school girls fighting you know yeah, or, sure. or boys fighting yeah. it's this constant um, sort of one-upmanship uh, in the realm of what violent images we're going to show you look at our movies you look at our, our our music culture it's violence 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 See, it's really interesting that you say that because after after something large like this happens, I always wait to see what's the thread that's going to come out of this. What's what's the push? Is it guns? Is it mental health? Because um, I've heard now both, you know, and I've heard family members of those who were killed saying that we've just got to get, you know, we've got to get guns off the streets, or we have to help people um, with their with their mental health. That now, but you know, listen, you guys talk about okay, now the violence, the exposure to violence, that that's another thread of yeah, this. I mean, the, the the problem is it's all of those things. Yeah. And, and we only ever want to talk about them in, in, you know, very narrow terms. I mean, there are too many guns. It's too easy to get a gun in this country. There's no question about that. Uh, the, the, the wrong people have them, right? Criminals, mentally ill people. Well, this guy matter. said he got his gun two days after the Charles the church shooting. Yeah, right? Uh, I mean, there's no, there's no, we have no rational way to deal with that. I mean, it, it, but it's too easy to say, well, let's get rid of the guns, because that's not a practical solution, right? I mean, how can you, how can you actually do that? Most of the guns that, that uh, are involved in crime in this country are possessed illegally. They are not possessed legally, although they are traceable to a legal sale, and I think that's part of the solution is holding people more re responsible for what happens to guns that they buy legally that end up doing other things. I don't disagree with uh, that. But, but um, you know, you also have all of this, you know, it's a violent society. And uh, uh, that combined with the guns, combined with our awful mental health policies, makes stuff like this way too easy to do. I, I mean, and the, the, the overall reality is that gun crimes, up until this recent spate over the summer, Gun crimes and gun violence has been declining at a fairly steady pace over the years. But then you have these incidents like this where you have clearly disturbed people. And this is another guy who, you know, had convinced himself he's fighting a race war, apparently. And, you know, there seemed to be a little bit of a copycat 
you know, in reverse, if you will, from the Charleston thing. Some of the language was the same. It's like, it's like these twisted people make heroes of, of, of the worst folks. And I, you know, I think as a culture, we have to start asking questions about what, what our view of violence is. And, you know, I, I'd like to bring in the mental health um, issue of it as well, because, you know, when people say, well, it's, it's mental illness, it's mental health, we need to really talk about, we need to talk about that, or we need to get on that. Um, <laughs> it also concerns me that people who maybe don't feel totally stable in their life, they see something like this, and they're afraid to say, yeah. I feel like I have some kind of mental health issues, because they're afraid to be labeled as an extreme, you know, as someone like this saying, well, gosh, I, I'm not going to say anything because there is such a stigma surrounding mental health. You're going to yeah. think I'm just as crazy as this yeah, guy. You get, you get to the point of that crazy. I, I don't know that you're making such rational um, decisions. I think the other element we've got to talk about here is our use of social networks and, and how we see these yeah. tools. And, yeah. and you know, you, you continue now to see the worst behavior sure. um, being played out on these social networks by children, by adults. Well, and, and if you think about it, if he hadn't killed two television reporters, hadn't put it on social media, would uh, a shooting that killed two would we people know about it? even have made the local no. newspaper there in Virginia? No, happened but last night in Detroit, right. I guarantee you. People yeah, do it all the time. But you don't see people now. getting shot on live television. No, no, I understand. Live warning no, no, television, I get that. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm his not, point uh, is that it's, these aren't isolated incidents. It's no, so widespread. People do this all the time. Go and shoot a couple people in Detroit, especially uh, right now. I mean, this has been a fairly violent year in the city. I mean, murders are still down, but if you look at shootings, uh, which are, of course, attempted murders, right. uh, yeah. um, the, the, we still are, are, are climbing that ladder in terms of uh, numbers and, and so and you and I had that conversation last week Steve and I had a conversation about this whole idea of you know you've got now children being killed and there's no outrage spark no. you've got gang you know, this grandmother who was slain um, by the Ravendale gang um, uh, last week in Detroit and her grandson you know tried to cover the body um, horrific situations horrific stories that aren't even making no, they the don't get covered. Right. So wait, we're, just, we're desensitized to it? Well, I think that's that the point. And, and it takes something like a live shooting on the morning news uh, of two television anchors to, 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 to get people's to get attention. To get people's attention to, what, three days from now? Well, They're right. going to yell uh, squirrel and someone's going to look someplace <laughs> else. This is my problem with the whole thing. We, and I, and I, I, I love having these discussions. And I love being able to say, OK, what do we do next? Or, or have that whole segment. Here's a six-minute segment at the end that we can say, where do we go from here? But uh, you know what? I'm not sure that it's. But, if this is just an, something else. I'm not sure that you're going to see anything big come well, out of this. Well, look, I mean, if you, if you look what happened when it, with these police shootings and the Black Lives Matter movement, I mean, that has caused people to start changing behaviors and start taking steps. You know, and part of the conversation we had last week is it, all black lives should matter, not just the ones um, being being taken by police officers and, and you know the vast majority of crime victims in this country are, are young black men African -American, and African Americans sure. and so if this movement were to expand beyond police and say look every time someone is slain innocent person is slain I, in Black Detroit, Lives Matter is, to... is an interesting model because that grew up out of social media and I had a conversation with uh, one of the organizers of it this week and he said 10 years ago this wouldn't have been possible because uh, Twitter occupied a really different uh, space and that's really where it came from and now you're seeing uh, that movement has put forth the whole uh, list of policy initiatives that they want to see enacted. I mean, it's, it's something that's actually maybe going to change things. Uh, so, I mean, it's sort of that double-edged sort of social media. Social media yeah. is what made this this crime mm -hmm. so so awful, uh, but it's also the way that that uh, we've started to organize in some cases around change. Why not expand right. that? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, grandmother's I grandmother's life should matter too. Uh, that's that's absolutely right. And, but uh, there needs should, to be a uh, a focus on, you know, death. We should uh, at least know about it when it happens. It shouldn't happen. And oh my gosh, the world, the city goes goes on, everything goes on as if two people, I mean, the woman killed on the bus last night in Detroit. Yeah. We can't have that sort of thing. <clears throat> and we need to stand up 
and start shouting about it and say, look, we got to stop this. Yeah. Every response can't be a violent response. It's a process. All right, guys, thanks. That's my week after the show.